ain't sleep this late. Why, half the day is gone. It's pretty near sun up. Say, who thinks alive? I ain't stayed a bed this late in 72 years. <laughs> Morning, Granny. Now, Jethro, don't you yell at me. I'm going to get breakfast just as soon as I can. Ma's done give us breakfast already, Granny. And now she's got us cleaning the house from top to bottom. How come no one woke me? Well, she says we ain't supposed to wake you. That's how come she shut off your alarm clock. So thorough done it. I'm sorry I took it out on you, clock. Yes, sir, your ma says bring you this bucket of suds. Oh, morning, Granny. How's your rheumatism? What rheumatism? Yeah, uh, Pearl says you was having some twinges last night. Uh, that's how come she put a little Mountain Dew into your squirrel soup. <laughs> Pearl spiked my soup? <laughs> yeah, she figured it would uh, help you to sleep. And you was liking it too, Granny. You kept asking for another slug of soup. <laughs> well, that, that's because I couldn't believe that Pearl could make such good soup. Granny, what are you doing up? Ain't Pearl said I was to give you your breakfast in bed. Beds is for sleeping, not eating. Well, ain't Pearl said a body had to be waited on and took care of when it gets to be your age? My age? Why, well, I'm in the prime of life. Oh, you tell your Aunt Pearl that... Never mind, I'll tell her myself. Ah, don't get riled up at Pearl. I reckon she's just trying to be helpful. She's about as helpful as an alligator in a swimming hole. <laughs> I'd rather be caught twixt a pair of scrapping bobcats and two women trying to run the same house. <laughs> Sakes alive. With all these newfangled gadgets, work around here is just play. <laughs> Where are you going with that, Jethreen? Outside. I told you to take it up to Granny's bedroom. Granny told me to take it outside. You're taking your orders from me and not from Granny. <laughs> that poor woman is old and tired, and we owe it to her to let her rest. <laughs> just hope and pray when I get to be her age that somebody will be looking after me. <laughs> you can quit hoping and praying. And if you keep messing around my kitchen, you ain't gonna get to be my age. <laughs> Don't stand there. Do as Granny says. Take it outside. <laughs> well, how do you feel, Granny? Did you sleep off the soup? I mean, did the soup... Uh, did, you, did the soup help you to sleep? <laughs> now, you listen to me, Pearl, and you listen good. When you was a baby, and you needed it, I spanked you. And when you was a toddler, I paddled you. And when you was a young and I switched you. And I can still do it, Pearl. Besides, the target's a heap much bigger today. <laughs> Honey, don't be riled. I, you was looking poorly last night, and I figured you needed a little rest. Honest, you, you look like the dogs that had you under the porch. <laughs> you can't scare me with that. I got a head of steam bigger than it has. <laughs> Gonna make pretty music when you make a check like this, Uncle Jed? Well, that ain't for playing with, Jethro. You bust that and your ma will tan you good. Ma, I didn't wash the front of the house as high up as I can get. I'll need a ladder to get the whole thing. Well, I'll get you to wash the whole outside the house? Yes, sir. She said every inch of it. Well, if she ain't the cleanest woman. Well, come on, I'll help you. Yourself, 
off running off and leaving a child that sick. <laughs> Green ain't sick, she's singing. Well, she's singing sick. <laughs> For your information, my daughter's training for the stage. Well, now, that's one thing she can do, drive a stage. Ah, uh, that backbiting twixt you two has got to stop. Quick as Jethro gets here with the truck, we're going to take a nice long drive and show Pearl some amazing sights. She ain't never going to see no more amazing sights than she sees every morning when she looks in the mirror. <laughs> I wouldn't talk girl, if I were you. Junkie Pop, here comes a truck and there's nobody a driving it. What's the trouble, Jethro? It's out of gas, Uncle Jed. They ain't even enough to get to the filling station. Yeah, I'll tell you what, sir. I mean, you run the house and get Granny's jug. The big one. Ooh! Don't tell me that child ain't sick. Nobody makes a noise like that on purpose. <laughs> You're going to be sorry you said them things when Jeff Green commences singing with a big orchestra like Rudy Valley. <laughs> Ooh! Rudy Valley and his Connecticut Yankees. <laughs> Did you hear that, Jed? Your traitor cousin Pearl is letting her daughter desert to the Yankees. <laughs> I reckon they're getting what they deserve. <laughs> Guess what, Ma? They tell me at school there's lots of movie stars live on this street. Oh, do you reckon that Francis X. Bushman lives in one of them houses? Would be a bit surprised. Oh, my stars and garters. If I was to meet him face to face, I'd faint that away. <laughs> So would he. <laughs> What'd she say, Ellie? Well, she said... Look at that big house down there. I bet you there's a movie star lives in that one. Oh, Jethro, drive up the driveway, and I'll go to the door and ask for directions. Uh, directions to where, Ma? Directions to the next corner. Who cares? <laughs> you didn't stop. Well, I know how to get to the next corner. <laughs> oh, you know we passed it. Why, that might have been Raymond Navarro's house. I might have got acquainted with him and told him how I play piano at the movie theater back home. <laughs> Why, I could have played and sung the song I wrote for the chariot race in Ben-Hur. Slip her down, Pearl. I don't reckon that was Mr. Navarro's house. I got a good look up the driveway as we passed. The barn door was open. There wasn't a span of horses or a chariot in there. <laughs> well, slow down anyway, Jethro. Land sakes, if I was to see... Rod LaRock or John Gilbert or Hoot Gibson, why, I wouldn't even have time to ask for their autograph. Some women is just plain man crazy. <laughs> What'd she say, Ellie? Well, she said some Let's women... Let's drive down to the business part of town, Jethro, and show Pearl some of the beautiful buildings and stores they got there. Okay, Uncle Jet. Tell your Aunt Pearl not to fret. They's been there, too. Hey, Pearl, Granny said... Never mind, Allie. Drive on, Jethro. I think we'll see some movie stars down there. Come in, folks. The movie's about to begin. By the way, the wax figures out front are by courtesy of the Beverly Hills Movie Museum. Ducky, eh, Pearl? There's a moving picture to it up yonder. Yeah. I wonder if they need a right good first-class piano player. <laughs> Why, do you know one? <laughs> now, I have taken Say, all... Say, Pearl, my... ain't there movie stars out in front of that theater? <laughs> Top of my Jethro. I can't believe it. It's Douglas Fairbanks, Rudolph Valentino, and William S. Hart. I have never seen one woman as man crazy and movie star crazy as William S. Hart. Lay me off of here. Let's go drive on before we embarrass him, poor fella. Bill, honey, you're my hero. You hoo, you hoo, hey, hey. Hi, Jethro. Swim. I'm too hungry, Ellie Mae. All that driving around, give me an appetite. Yeah, I reckon all that fresh air give us all our appetite. I'm empty as last year's bird's nest myself. Buddy, time too. I reckon I got time for a little friend before fiddle. Hurry up, Ellie Mae. I could eat a horse. Well, it's just to everybody relax. I'll have Biddles to cook in for you can say Jack Robinson. <laughs> Jack Robinson. <laughs> and you stay out of my kitchen. I believe that kitchen happens to belong to my cousin Jake. Well, I said, Granny, 
And Granny's is closer than cousin. Now, when the Granny's on the wife's side, I got clamped blood in my veins. <laughs> you want to keep it there, you stay out of my kitchen. Hey, Uncle Dan, come on back. There's going to be a fight. Oh, I don't fight nobody twice my age. There ain't nobody twice your age. I happen to be on the sunny side of 45. Well, then move into the shade. You're drying up something awful. <laughs> Now, hold on, hold on. Who's closer related to you, Jed? Her or me? I is, because I's a granny. You're a mother-in-law. I'm blood cousin. You're gonna be... Oh, now, no, no. I reckon you're both just as close related to me as folks can be, because I love you both equal. And it'd pleasure me if you'd shake hands. And come out fighting. <laughs> no. Come on, now, shake hands. Granny, you start it off. Come on. Now, shake hands. Come on, Granny, shake hands with Pearl. <laughs> there you are. Now, uh, Granny, say something nice to Pearl. <laughs> Go on, say something nice. Pearl? I never did see anything prettier than the weather is today. <laughs> now, Granny. Well, that was friendly. Well, say something nice and friendly uh, about Pearl. Don't force her, Jed. I ain't forcing her. She's just trying to think up some extra special nice now, ain't you, Granny? Yeah, and it ain't easy. See? Oh, Pearl. She's always bragging on you. How pretty you are. What a nice figure you got. I bragged on Pearl's figure. You sure did. You said Pearl got the kind of figure a man likes. Yeah. And then I said, too bad a man didn't get it instead of Pearl. <laughs> I wouldn't talk if I had a figure as bony as you. Down, Pearl. You're built like a sack full of horseshoes. <laughs> and you're built like a sack full of doorknobs. <laughs> now, let me tell you... Down, Pearl. Pearl. Uncle Jed, you're breaking up a good fight. Yes, so why don't you go out and help your sister Jethreen? Well, what's she doing? I don't know. If I know what she's doing, go help her. Oh, you never let me have any fun. No. Now, I'm asking you just as nice as I know how to stop all this backbiting and bickering. You're both fine-looking women. I'm proud to be kin to you. Why, if folks didn't know, they'd think you was Ellie Mae's sisters. Aww. Oh, Ellie, honey. <laughs> Why don't you take these two pretty girls swimming down to the seaman pond? That ought to cool them off. In the dead of winter? Oh, the water stays warm all year round, ain't Pearl? Yeah, it must be fed by some kind of hot mineral springs or something. Oh, well, th that ought to be mighty good for your rheumatiz, Granny. And I'll fix lunch while you're swimming. I told you to stay out of my kitchen. And I told you that... Now, my that's is enough. And I hear one more word spoken in anger out of either one of you. Dog, if I ain't gonna take a switch to you. Hey, Pearl, Granny ain't too fond of swimming, but I'd be mighty proud if you'd go with me. Oh, that's a mighty sweet invite, Ellie Mae. Earl, did you bring some swimming clothes? Yeah, I did. Well, now, you run along, get into them. Uh-uh. Come on, put them on. All right, doggies. I bet you Pearl in them swimming clothes has got the figure of a young girl. She better give it back before she stretches it out of shape anymore. <laughs> I didn't say it in anger. I'm smiling. <laughs> well, I'm ready for the water. She looks like she's been in it for six days. <laughs> Pearl! You are one of the finest looking women ever to come down out of the hill. And you're extra fetching in your swimming clothes. <laughs> I made it myself. The ticket, you say. <laughs> it's all hand work. No. <laughs> yep. Every gore and gussy and dart and tuck and ruffling and rick like I did it all myself. Mm, doggy, that's mighty pretty. And so are you, Pearl. Granny, did you ever see anything like Pearl in her bathing suit? No, sir, I ain't. Well, uh, come on, I'll show you the pond. Uh, me and Jethro's down there waiting for you. Hold on there. What do you think you're doing? Fixing to cut Ellie's hair. Whack it off short, folks, so it won't get in my eyes when I swim. I'd sooner cut off my arm than that beautiful hair of yours. 
Now, don't you never get a notion like that in your head again, nor you neither. You mean I gotta let my hair grow long as Ellie's? Deborah, why don't you try using your head for thinking? I have tried, Ma, and it hurts. <laughs> Keep an eye on these two. I gotta go back up the house. I will, Jeff. Hey, Ma, you wanna race Ellie and me to the fur end of the pond and back? In the water? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And get my swimming suit wet? Yeah. Oh, you do bear watching, both of you. <laughs> you see them ham hocks? Yeah, Ma. Where'd they come from? From pigs, I reckon. <laughs> How did they get here? Oh, I took them out of the icebox. I was getting awful hungry. Was you gonna eat them raw? Of course not. Huh. I was gonna keep my swimming trunks on. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> Mary. Yeah, Aunt Pearl. What is this thing? It looks like a stove on wheels. Well, that's what it is. It's called a portable barbecue. You just put a fire in there, then you lay the meat on this thing. All right. Ellie Mae, you fetch some firewood. Jethro, you slice them ham hocks. <laughs> what would you like to hear next, Uncle Jeff? Well, uh, can you play Dixie? Why, sure. I sure do like to sing that song. It's right good for dancing, too. Would you do a jig? Well, if the music happens to get down around my feet, I might just cut loose and stomp a spell. <laughs> Better take my coat off just in case it does. <laughs> Forgotten. Look away, look away, look away, Dixie Lane. I wish I was in Dixie. Hooray, hooray. In Dixie Land, I'll take my stand to live and die in Dixie. Away, 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 down south in Dixie. Away, 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 down south. It smells like ham we're cooking, Uncle Jeff. Well, let's get on down to the cement pond, tell everybody we're going to have ham. <laughs> that is a shortcut. <laughs> when the family tastes these riddles, they ain't never going to let Pearl near the kitchen again. Here, stove with wheels. 
Ma can cook anywhere. Well, let's see her cook. Well, I'm going out Don't do it, Granny. <laughs> presentation.